Coming up, five top tips from experienced project managers to new project managers. Hey team, I'm Stuart Taylor from Influential PMO. When you're starting out in a new career as a project manager, it really helps to get as much advice as you can get from experienced project managers. The problem is, it can be a little bit intimidating to just start approaching senior project managers and asking, what would you do in my place? Well, I'd encourage you to go and ask that question and I'd encourage you to go and have that conversation. Most successful project managers are really good communicators, they're really good problem solvers, and they'd relish the opportunity to help a junior project manager to find their feet in the occupation. If you don't have access to experienced project managers, or if they're too busy, or if you're just too shy, don't worry about it. I've reached out to my network of project managers and asked them to provide one top tip they would give to a new project manager. First, we have some advice from Amy Tarrant, who has some advice regarding stakeholders. Hi Stuart, my name's Amy Tarrant and I'm project lead at Axis Capital. I've been delivering projects and programs across the London market for around 10 years and I've learned a lot, but I'm distilling this knowledge down to one pearl of wisdom today, which is don't get so bogged down in project and program documentation that it's to the detriment of your stakeholder management. Of course, it goes without saying that good projects and program managers will all always produce strong documentation and it's great but going belt and braces on documentation will only get you so far. 70% of projects fail. And a big part of that is failing to create a sufficiently powerful guiding coalition, under communicating the vision and permitting obstacles to block that vision. I don't want you to become a victim of that statistic. So here's my advice. Carry out a stakeholder analysis at the start. Identify your stakeholders. Who should you be managing? Build a powerful vision, paint the picture to your stakeholders of what you're delivering and why, and continue to do it regularly. And finally, make sure you nip objections and barriers in the bud early, because whether they're real or imagined, these are the things that will derail your project. And if you're managing your stakeholders in the right way, you'll hear about these sooner rather than later, and you can deal with them head on. Good luck. Quite right, Amy it's very easy to focus on everything else in the project other than those tricky stakeholders. But if you get the right people on side and you have influential voices on your side, it's so much easier to resolve issues when they come up and to stay on track for success. Now over to Phil Taylor, who's got some advice regarding asking questions. Hi Stuart, my name is Phil Taylor and I've been a project manager in the convenience retail market for just over three and a half years. In my previous role as a project coordinator, I was able to gain some project management experience through desktop projects and general business rollouts. My advice to a new project manager is actually something that I was told when I first started my role. If you don't know the answer, don't make something up. You will get found out and people won't trust your decisions afterwards. It's a common misconception with people new to the role that as a project manager, you should know all of the answers and this couldn't be further from the truth. Take your time to understand what you need to deliver identify and surround yourself with experts in the relevant fields. Quite early on in my time as a project manager, I had to make some decisions based around on-site issues with signage and electrical installations. And that was something that I hadn't dealt with before. I utilized the knowledge of my contractors and requested different options to be presented to me in order for me to make informed decisions whilst balancing out the cost and time requirements of the fit out project. Identify people within your own organization or team that have more experience and don't be afraid to ask them questions. They will probably have encountered some of the issues that you may see on your own projects and can provide some sound advice on how to deal with them effectively. I hope that you found some of this information useful. This has stood me in very good stead during my time in the role of a project manager. Thank you for your time and back to you Stuart. Thanks Phil, good advice. You're not always going to be the most knowledgeable person in the room and if you don't ask questions, and you try to bluff your way through, as Phil says, you'll get found out. Okay, we're nearly halfway through. If you're getting value from this, don't forget to hit the like button and don't forget to share this with any new project managers in your network. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss future content. Now over to Mike Coppenhout, who's got some advice around understanding clearly what it is you're setting out to achieve. Hi Stu, thanks for inviting me onto your channel. My name is Mike and I've been a project manager for a number of years. I typically work on business transformation programs at large banks like Lloyd's, RBS, HSBC and Barclays. My tip today is know what success looks like. This means knowing what problems your project has been set up to solve. 
what your goals are and what your stakeholders really need. Sometimes this can mean working with your stakeholders to formalise requirements and you might find that they don't like to commit themselves and you really need to pin them down on what they want. Or sometimes this can mean working through requirements that you've been given to make sure you really know what you're being asked to do. When you have a clear understanding of this, it will make other parts of the project easier, especially things like identifying risk, prioritisation of work, problem solving and strategic decision making. Thanks Mike. Sometimes you will get very vague objectives and it's worth taking a little extra time to drill into the details, have conversations with the stakeholders and get them to be explicit about what it is that they truly want. Doing so will really help to prevent your outcomes from being rejected by the business at the end of the project. And now over to Parent Aria who also has some advice around understanding what's expected from the project, only from a slightly different perspective. Hi Stuart, this is Pawan. I have been a, a, a program and portfolio uh, manager for more than 20 years now. And uh, uh, my specialty is around transformation programs. So the top tip for today is for project managers uh, to bring a sense of purpose in, in managing the project. Uh, let me explain a little bit further. I think project managers, their most of uh, uh, mind space and communication focus on what is to be delivered and by when it is to be delivered. These two things are quite important, but at the same time, the most fundamental aspect of project management is why a project is being done. What is the business outcome or a set of business outcomes that the project is meant to bring about? A project manager should have a really good understanding of why this project is being done. And that helps in uh, uh, managing stakeholders' expectations, uh, managing communications, and also adopting an agile and flexible approach to, to the project management when it comes to changing business context uh, during the life cycle of a project. Just a quick example uh, that uh, recently, as part of my uh, experience in uh, tra uh, finance transformation management, I was asked a question by a senior stakeholder that why are we spending $250 million, million on this program, whereas the cost benefit is only about $30 million per year. So I had to explain to, to the stakeholder that uh, it's not about uh, financial benefit, it is about operational risk reduction. And uh, one simple example was that uh, the financial statements every month required more than 100,000 manual adjustments to be done to the transactions before a single report can be produced. So this project was going to eliminate most of those manual adjustments and hence improving the risk profile. So, so that, that actually helped me to save the day in conversation with the stakeholder. And coming back to, to my fundamental point here is that bring a sense of purpose and make sure that the stakeholders and the wider audience understand that why this project is being done at the first place. That's my top tip for today. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Stuart. Thanks, Powan. And as Powan says, understanding why the project fundamentally exists is really important as well. This differs slightly from what Mike was saying about understanding what's needed. This focuses on why the project exists. And now for my tip, back in the day, I did actually go and ask a senior manager for his advice on what I could do to improve as a project manager. I was expecting to be told to improve on a technical skill of some sort, improve planning or improve communications or finances or something like that. What he actually told me was I needed a thicker skin and I immediately proved him right by having hurt feelings from hearing that. It did turn out to be good advice and I did take the advice and it's a good thing as well because there's an awful lot of things you'll encounter in project management and fairness isn't always top of the list. Now I know that manager watches this channel and he'll be watching this video and I've been encouraging him to come onto the channel for an interview and so far he's been resistant so I need your support now. Go into the comments and write we want Sean. Now get out there and start applying these tips and I'll look forward to seeing you next time.